I think we won the battle, because nobody wants to say they're protectionists, unless they're really wackos. Fairness is an important issue in the United States. I mean, this is what we mean by saying that in the United States, it's the equality of opportunity, not of outcome, that matters. So we are a fairness-oriented culture. The Europeans who are actually more stratified, they're more into equality of outcome because they, the ability of people, the social mobility is, is perceived to be much less, and therefore they want state to intervene and redistribute what is in fact going to be an unequal outcome. So they're more into justice and we are more into fairness. So if you really want to be a protectionist, you've got to go to the, to the political space and say, these rated Japanese or these Indians, whatever you, are actually trading unfairly. And then you've got your case ready-made, people will much more readily give you protection by saying the other guy is a wicked, unfair trader. So I, I think it, it fits into our cultural milieu much, much more um, than, than outright protectionists. I think we won the battle, because nobody wants to say they're protectionists, unless they're really wackos. President actually has made some remarks about beat border tax adjustments not being such a good idea. But he's got to do more than that. He's got to be eloquent. He's going to say, this is a crazy thing to do. Uh, but he's, he's still very cool. You know, and he needs to lose his temper once in a while, a little, I mean, show, because this is too important. I mean, you know, US is one of the, is the biggest trading nation in the world. We, we want the rule of law. We don't want retaliation, which will be massive. I mean, India and China are not Zaire or Zimbabwe. I mean, they're not little, little countries you can push around. And by God, we don't want to unleash that, uh, that kind of trade war, because it would easily, it would be very hard to control, I'm afraid. Basically, it took on uh, arguments which are uh, on the social side, namely, you know, what happens as a result of globalization to women's issues, uh, to environment, to uh, democratic governance, uh, to poverty in the poor countries, um, issues which, are, which I sometimes call citizens' issues. And it came out basically saying that even on these where a lot of anti-globalization critics had a, uh, were actually very skeptical uh, and worried that, in fact, uh, these agendas would also be advanced rather than handicapped by globalization. Many people ask me why, if I'm for free trade, which I am, why I'm against free trade agreements. And I, I think the, the reason is that free trade agreements are both free trade and protection. They're, they're two, two flip sides together. Because when, when I have free trade just with you, uh, I'm freeing trade with you. But the handicap of the people who are not members of our free trade area in our markets in competing with us is increased because they have to pay, continue paying the duties to get into our markets, but we have removed them on each other. So de facto, that is pr increasing protection against outsiders and reducing oh, protection in allowing free trade among ourselves. Today, with things being produced, parts coming from God knows everywhere, for, for you to have to then decide which, which product is my partner country's product rather than an outside country's product becomes completely arbitrary. Is a Canadian car with, produced with Japanese steel, uh, chemicals from uh, Germany, uh, et cetera, et cetera, where 80 or 90 percent of the parts may come from elsewhere. Is that a Canadian car? Or is it really something else? Does it qualify for the zero tariff 
you know, under NAFTA. He has to step up to the plate and basically change the ethos in this country uh, to his understanding that the United States has profited enormously. The world has been rescued from poverty, not sufficiently, but a fair distance in, in around the world, particularly in India and China, uh, that our own working class has also profited from international trade, and their worries about international trade are no good. He's got to make an eloquent case like that, just, and he's got to see that this is something that needs as much attention and as much of his uh, eloquence as the speech he had to make on race after he got into trouble over you know, his, his pastor, because he has to make it clear where he stands and where he's going to run with the issue. He doesn't have the luxury of most presidents, which is to use a first year to kind of find your feet on trade. He's got to be out there. Mm -hmm.